Bismillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah My dear brothers and my sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Nobody wants to hear that people are speaking against them Or about them Nobody would like to be slandered or defamed or someone making lies or just promoting even if the person has committed a sin, nobody would want their sin to be everywhere around town. Yet it has become a fact today that many Muslims have made it their purpose to only do that. And that is just to go around, they hear whatever they hear, and suddenly they become the free newspaper that you get in the underground every morning and in the afternoon. Even if the person has repented and went back to Allah, many people out there do not want the person to stay on the right path. What has prompted me to speak about this slandering and defamation is because the other day somebody sent me a message inquiring about a somebody that left a message in one of the groups of WhatsApp speaking against somebody else, or what we call today the character assassination. And he was vague in his criticism, but he just said that that person there is evil or whatever. And subhanAllah, when this brother went in a conversation and discussion with the other backbiter as to why he was doing that, the person mentioned a hadith that لا غيبة لفاسق There is no غيبة for anyone who is fasiq, i.e. disobedient of Allah. And then the person went on explaining to the other person that even still you shouldn't do that. Then the person mentioned another hadith where one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seated with his companions and then a funeral passed by and the Sahaba spoke good of the funeral and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wajabat, it has become confirmed. And uh, then another janaza went by and they spoke bad about it and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wajabat, that means it has been confirmed. And Omar asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as to why he said it's been confirmed. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him that the first First janazah, when you spoke good about it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted it paradise, and that's what it is wajib, but confirmed. And the second one, when you spoke evil of them, then Allah didn't grant them paradise. And then Rasulullah said, in the meaning that you are the witness of Allah on earth. And this person here says, the backbiter here, back here, that he uses this story that the Sahaba spoke evil about the person because the other people or the other person was a disobedient. And uh, subhanAllah, as much as it hurts, but misunderstanding Islam is a huge problem we are facing today. So my talk today is about defamation and how people use Islam, the prohibitions in Islam, to get closer in their thoughts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the very first thing that I'm going to start with is the hadith or what is referred to as la ghayba li fasq there is no ghayba for a fasq or there is no backbiting for the fasq again the fasq the meaning of fasq is take a date and there is a small layer that surrounds the stone so when you take the slowly when you take the stone out of the layer that, that is fasaqa that means you took it out so in general context it means someone who has gone out on something and usually in Islam it means that the person has disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this hadith here la ghaybat ali fasiq as Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani when he was asked about this he said this is an unauthentic hadith la yasih and this is a fabricated hadith and in, in this case here nobody has ever got any right to backbite any Muslim it's worth mentioning that the default in Islam is prohibition it is haram to backbite somebody else as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wala and nobody should speak about the other one in their absence at all. So the general rule, it is not permitted under any circumstances. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Quran spoke about a different issues when a person can speak and I will come across to these things where somebody can speak when they can speak about somebody else and how much they can say. So anyway, so back to this one here. So as we know now, لا غيبة لفاسق There is no backbiting for a fasiq. If you did it, there won't be any sins for you. We know now that that Hadith is a lie, and as such, anyone who counts on that hadith has Billah, got it uh, all wrong. Then the person, when he was again talked to, he went on to Islam QA, and he got a fatwa there that there are six types of people. When that happens, it means you can speak against the person. 
And uh, let me tell you just briefly the six people, and I'm going to say the text upon which this person has based his criticism. It is a two-poetry text, which says, الذم ليس بغيبة في ستة متظلم ومعرف ومحذن ولمظهر فسقا ومستفت ومن طلب الإعانة في إزالة منكر which translates to something that uh, backbiting takes place except in one of the six following conditions. Number one, complaining about mistreatment or oppression. And that means if you have a problem with somebody and you have been mistreated and you go to complain to somebody to help you or whatever, so you tell them X, Y, they did this, this, this. So you tell them what has happened. So that is not backbiting. Number two, identifying a person because of a physical appearance. For example, somebody who is very tall or someone who is big or someone with green eyes or whatever. So you tell, oh, X, Y, Z with those uh, characteristics. So this is not considered as backbiting. Number three, warning against someone. For example, someone who cheats takes money or does something like that. And you tell them X, Y, Z takes money. Number four, uncovering sinful acts, and that is referred to as uh, fiskan, i.e. if you see someone, for example, drinks or deals in drugs, and then you say, oh, X, Y, Z deals in drugs. Number five, speaking, seeking fatwa, and that is when you go and ask about the fatwa, for example, you have an issue with the second person, and you tell the sheikh what has happened between you two, this case here is not considered a fatwa. Number six, while seeking help to remove a sinful or evil act, and this is if you see someone, for example, committing fornication, and you want the help of someone to stop that, and in which case, you can do that. You can go and speak about it, and it's not considered as a sin. So the person here relied on the number four that is the uncovering of sinful act, i.e. defaming the person because he is an evil doer, i.e. someone who commits uh, fisk, haram things, and you go to people and you tell them X, Y, Z does this, 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 this. But you know what? The whole six things, let me introduce you first uh, these six things. Are they a hadith? In fact, they are not a hadith. So where do they come from? Well, you'll be surprised to know that it is Abu Awjian al-Maliki, a scholar of the 9th century, we are in the 14th century, so we can just go back five cent 500 years ago. So these two lines of poetry were coined by Ibn Awdian al-Maliki, who is one of the students of Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, and it is him who coined these six things. For 900 years before that, nobody ever knew that, even at the time of the Sahaba. And for 900 years, nobody ever has considered these six conditions. So, as you can see, these are not hadith, and they are not Quran, and they are not something out of there. It's just one of those innovated matters. And here we go, our brother here says that by uncovering the sinful act and the fisk of somebody, we have to keep backbiting him. What he is saying is this, as soon as you know that someone is committing a sin, like the other night I was with my daughter, and I saw a brother who I really know very well, coming out from a gambling place. I know him. So now, because I saw him there, this number fourth element gives me the authority to go to people and start backbiting that X, Y, Z is a gambler. Now, does that give me the authority to do that? By Allah, it does not. And this is the problem of this uh, Arabic less Islam only, those people who don't read Arabic. When you speak about, let's assume that the person you are backbiting is really committing uh, haram. Okay, for example, they take drugs, they drink, they do whatever you think they are doing. It is not your duty to go and speak about the person now or what they're doing. Your duty is to keep it safe and secret and not promote it in front of people. But if the person takes drugs and sells drugs, in which case here, because the person has become a fasiq, it is something, it has become a characteristic of the person to do evil. In which case, yes, you can tell people, X, Y, Z sells drugs, be careful. Now, this is extremely important. Our scholars have said, when you speak about something, if that problem is A, you absolutely have no right to go to B. So you just mention that and you mention it as a piece of information. Do not get involved in, do not slander, do not put the other person down. You just say that person there, that's that. 
and you don't insult and you don't do all that kind of stuff. So let me put this thing here, first thing first, as we would say. This, the six points that I just spoke about are not a definite fact accepted by all scholars. In fact, many scholars have rejected many of them. But yet so many people have made this part of a religion when in fact it is not. What we accept is what Al-Quran has spoken and Al-Quran has spoken about two of these elements. The other four you can as well throw in the uh, rubbish bin. Also, the companions did not have these six points for the, or nor the first 900 years, subhanAllah. And even if they spoke about a sinful act committed by a someone, they wouldn't do that unless the person does it openly and it becomes his habit and he becomes known by it. It's not like uh, you hear somebody says, oh, X, Y, Z, I've heard, I've heard. You know, when you hear somebody doing something, you really don't want to believe it. And let me tell you how. When our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, when she went with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in an expedition, but you know the long story short, and she lost a necklace that she borrowed from her sister, and she wouldn't wanna leave, so she kept looking for it. But anyway, you know the story where she slept, and a companion found her. Our mother Aisha lost a necklace. By the time she got to Al Madina, Abdullah ibn Salul, one of the the, the, the head of the hypocrites, he just hinted. He said. Oh, a young, beautiful girl with a young, beautiful boy. I don't think she would escape that. And he kept it. Some of the Sahaba, what they did, they took that element and then it turned into they might have flirted. And then they flirted. And then he slept with her. And then he ma they made her a fornicator. billah. For a whole 30 days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he didn't receive any revelation from the sky. For a whole 30 days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in extreme pain about what was happening. Even towards the end, he spoke to people, Ya yeah, Ayyuhan Nas, what's wrong with you? Some people are attacking me in my earth, and by Allah, I only know of good about the family of Abu Bakr. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran. Always, my dear brothers and my sisters, remember this. Whenever you hear something about somebody, always think from a necklace to a fornication. If they tell you we saw somebody, always, always, always divide it by one million. Because the person that has just reported to you there is himself committed a major sin. He is a fasiq. A fasiq is exactly like the one he thinks he's warning against. You've got no right to speak, but as soon as you open your mouth, you are committing a major sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Hujurat, and I don't want to make this talk about the backbiting or slander as a whole, but I just want to mention these two elements. But Allah has made it clear in Al-Quran. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu in ja'akum fasiqun binaba. Al-fasiq, my dear brothers and my sisters, is the person who commits a major sin and does not repent from it. And the problem is when people of these days, of our time here, when they slander thinking they're doing right, they will not repent from it. In fact, they will think they are doing a good job and they are actually raking hasanat by backbiting the other people. And that in this case here, as Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, the moment you open your mouth to speak against someone, you are a fasiq. And if the other person lends you their ears so that you can backbite, they also become, waliyadhi billah, a fasiq. Now I want to go to the hadith number two, or to the experience where he said that Rasulullah was seated with the Sahaba and a funeral processing passed by. Another evil that has creeped up to us today and with the advent of the internet and manufacturing movies, pictures, recordings and things, it has become really, really easy to blackmail people into something that they haven't done. Today I was watching a documentary on the television where this great scholar who doesn't agree with some scholars in Saudi Arabia, people actually create accounts on Twitter, Facebook with his name and post on his behalf evil stuff. So as you can see, Technology can be used to vile ends. And what a vile thing to do, to actually slander and blackmail people to silence. This is a major problem Muslims face today. How do ever you hear of someone seek to clarify or correct an intellectual or religious person? By that I mean, yes, someone, for example, let's assume someone said something. If you have something about what they say, 
why don't you go and ask them or challenge them or do something? Why do you hide behind shadows and you don't want your name revealed and you speak against them and you backbite them and you defame them and you slander them? And when people tell you, how about we bring them to you, you coward and you chicken out and you ran away. This is not how the, our scholars did. So Muslims today, even they take, they go, look at the scholars of the hadith, they backbite others. I'm sorry, they don't backbite. All they say is they speak about one particular issue, and that is how much they are reliable in transmitting what they heard. So they say this is reliable, he is not reliable, end of it. They don't go into their personal life and attack them and slander them. Never ever has happened. This disease and this sickness and this cancer is living today, and the more technology becomes spread out, the more this disease happens. billah. Now let me mention the hadith where the Rasulullah says in the meaning that well, the witnesses of Allah on earth. And this hadith here is reported by Bukhari and Muslim and it gives something in general that one day Rasulullah was seated with the Sahaba and a funeral passed by and the Sahaba spoke good of the person. فَأَثْنَوْ عَلَيْهِ خَيْرًا So they spoke on that janazah with good. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wajabat. Wajabat, I, it's confirmed, it's due. A bit later, it happened that subhanAllah, another funeral procession passed by. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhu started, وَأَثْنَوْ عَلَيْهَا أَيْ عَلَى الْجَنَازَةَ شَرًا And they started speaking bad about the funeral, about the person who is in the coffin going to the graveyard. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wajabat, i.e. it is confirmed and it is due. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is wajabat? What, what has been confirmed? What is due? Well, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the meaning, the first janazah, when it passed, you spoke good of it, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made al-jannah their place, their abode, and the second one, they spoke evil, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made hellfire their abode, and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Antum shuhada Allah fi al-ard, you are the witnesses of Allah on earth. Now this hadith here, this person used this argument and he says, so he thinks now that he is the righteous person and he has given himself the authority to actually sit there as a policeman and says that is evil. This is, now this person here shows the really true ignorance about the context of the hadith. The very first thing, it is the understanding of the scholars of Islam that we do not have any right to speak about a living person if they are going to go to jail or to hellfire. Even today, the greatest scholar in the Muslim world, we cannot say that person is going to Jannah or if they are going to hellfire. This is not our business. The hadith here speaks about two people that already have died. Have already died. Al-Imam al-Nawawi raised the question, how can the Sahaba speak evil about a person that has died? And in Sahih al-Bukhari itself, there is a clear prohibition about speaking evil about the dead people. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani answers this question in his Fath al-Bari, where he says that al-Nawawi spoke and said, the apparent reason as to why the Sahaba spoke evil about the second funeral is because the second funeral was of that of a hypocrite that fought against Allah and his messenger. And this is also further explained in Musnad al-Imam Ahmed, and the hadith is Bisanad in Sahih, it has a strong uh, authentic chain of narrator, that al-Imam Ahmed reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went and prayed the janazah on the first janazah of the one that they spoke good on, but he did not pray the janazah on the second person that died. And from here we understand that that hadith was more about a believing person that died, and the second evil one was of that of a hypocrite of a disbeliever. And as such, it is not permitted to slander or backbite someone just because he is doing an act of evil. And this becomes even worse when someone is not doing any act of evil and people are slandering, character assassination them just because of hearsay. If this person is a preacher or a Muslim da'i, or, then the prohibition becomes stronger. And if it is of sexual type 
like accusing the person of any sexual things, then the speaker, the slanderer, must bring four witnesses. Otherwise, in the Islamic law, by the Quran, the person that slanders anyone when it comes with sexuality has to have 80 lashes for just opening their mouth. Now imagine this posting something like this in a group in WhatsApp in front of hundreds of people, hearsay and a lie, accusing someone of sexuality or theft or anything, and people are saying, and the person says that they're going to get rewards because of how much, subhanAllah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much should we need that Al-Quran prohibits backbiting at all in The default of every Muslim is not to speak is to shut our mouth, never ever utter anything about anyone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا This is in Surah Al-Hujurat, the ayah 12. And do not speak in the absence of each other. This backbiting is further explained by Rasulullah sallallahu when he says, أَتَدْرُونَ مَا الْغِيبَ Do you know what is speaking on the absence of somebody? As Sahaba said, Allah and his Rasul know better. And with this expression we can say it when Rasulullah sallallahu was alive. Today he is dead, we only say Allah knows more. He says, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكْ بِمَا تَكْرَهُ And that is mentioning your brother with that which he doesn't or she doesn't like. For example, if someone doesn't like it when you speak about their hair style, if you speak about their hair style in their absence, that's backbiting. It's haram and that is a major sin. It's not like a small minor sin, it's a major sin. If someone doesn't like you speaking about their car, and if the, whatever the person would get angry about, if they were present, you are not entitled to say it. Then the Sahaba radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ فِي أَخِي مَا أَقُولُ Ya Rasulullah, have you seen if what we say is actually true? It exists in the person that we are saying. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, then you have backbeaten them, you have spoken in their absence, and that's a major sin. And then they said, and if it is not, then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَقَدْ بَهَتَّهُ You have slandered them. And slandering of a Muslim is just like killing them. Now the question is, at the end of the day, what is the purpose of Islam when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala calls the Muslims to be one single nation and you slander your brother or your sister? To what end? It makes it even worse if the slanderer is a coward enough not to stand in front of the person they slandered. If what you speak is the truth, face them as the Ahl Sunnah, our scholars did in the past. Don't say, oh, I'd say this on WhatsApp, you just leave a message and you just because that's it and you don't, you're scared of facing the person. What kind, what kind of Islam is this? And people, subhanAllah, you can say something about one person, my dear brothers and my sisters. And you can slander as much as you want. But at the end of the day, the great party is not tonight and it's not in this life. The great party is when you meet that person on the day of Al-Qiyamah and they start digging into the bag of good deeds and handing it over to you. On that day, you will know who is the rat. And why do I say the rat? Because Rasulullah mentioned four animals and one of them is the rat and he says, he was fwaisiqa or fasiq and exactly also the crow, all these dead animal, evil animals. It's too easy to speak in the back of somebody. It's too easy to slander. It's too easy to defame. It's too easy to make stories. And it's too easy to take a Photoshop or a video camera and you do a montage and you make the person appear in the breast of that thing. But you know what? At the end of the day, yes, it will cause them pain. Yes, it will cause them this and that. But at the end of the day, watch out. Allah will get you. I will tell you a story that has happened. One day, about um, 25 years ago, somebody came to me and he said, uh, oh, I've heard that X, Y, Z, a scholar is a pedophile. And I said, subhanAllah. And then there was a small booklet written by some governments because this person was against that government. So what happened is they tried to defame him as a pedophile and they tried and they tried. You know what? At the end of the day, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who makes things take place or not. So for all of you who hear say people, when someone comes to say something about somebody else, you the listener, you must be firm and tough and you tell them, shut up. 
and you tell him you are a fasik. Right now you are committing a major sin. You and the rat are exactly the same. You are a small, tiny mice, a mouse in the world of Muslims. As if we've got no problems these days, all we have to do is speak about people. And let me reiterate again. When it comes to speaking backbiting people, there is a difference when you say, I don't like the hair of that somebody. It's a major sin. You're backbiting them. But when you accuse them of something of sexual type, any kind of sexual type, you need four witnesses. If the person doesn't bring four witnesses, they receive 80 lashes. Despicable you, the one who backbites, the one who makes his business just to defame people and lie on based on what? On hearsay. Don't take stance. Don't be biased. Don't do, don't do. That's none of your business. Let people do what they do, especially people who call to Islam. I really don't get it. Allah, wallahi, I don't get it. We have people of the Qawm Lut, the unifying worldwide. They even have one flag. And that flag is multi-colored of the rainbow. Everywhere they are in solidarity. Drags, everybody is in solidarity except Muslims. The beard that you get on your face when at the end of the day you eat the flesh of your brothers and your sisters. Apparently you are a good Muslim and your production in the community, you are a disease, a cancer. What good is that beard? What good is that beard? I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one day Muslims will open their eyes. Otherwise, watch what Donald Trump is going to do. He's going to kick us until we can't sit on our butt for a whole year. Because why? Because instead of unifying ourselves, we waste our times backbiting people on here say this is a nation that doesn't deserve the greatness of Islam no wonder we are just like a pair of shoes anyone can walk with us to the toilet because we don't even deserve to be worn to a nice party I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rid us of these diseases of this cancer of those who only take Islam in English who misunderstand the text of Islam those who think they are doing good when they are in fact creating havoc and the cancer in the Muslim uh, Ummah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them what they deserve and to take them away from us. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa and as you know my number is 07876408735 so if you want to be part of my group please do send me a message, send your questions, comments and everything. This talk will be also on YouTube so please do make sure that you check my channel up there. I love you all. Wa salli allahum ala nabiyyina Muhammad subhanak allahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.